such a shit biased hating classic video well then we'll watch it and we'll see what he says right i mean uh, the thing is like i have no problem disagreeing with somebody uh th that's all there is to it world of warcraft classic mm -hmm. and as these things go i've got to lay yep. down my bona fides i have been playing world okay. of warcraft since launch i have okay. been playing world of warcraft a lot that's since it launch. that's it He's only been playing 324 yeah, this is, yeah, this days. Is weird. This is so like, what are you bragging about, dude? Was that like, like an hour a week, maybe? Yeah. What do you mean, like 324 days? <laughs> that's like that's nothing, man. Uh, okay. All right. Anyway, total time played three like 60 days on just this level. Does that mean he played BFA for 60 days already? Holy fuck. Launch. I have the Ivory Raptor, which involved okay. farming up 1,000 gold within the first six months the game was out, and I did that in, like, three, a few years. That's impressive. That, that is impressive. Years ago, Blizzard sent me this nice little statuette commemorating 10 oh. years of unbroken subscription to the game, which wow. means that this is a cute little gesture from a company that made a game I really like, but also kind of yikes. I have this in-game Windrider pet because it came with Why this Windrider plush doll that I keep on the shelf behind my streaming setup. I've done okay. server first raiding. I helped three people grind to High Warlord. I have my Brawler's Guild rewards, Mage Tower rewards, okay. Swift Flight form, and even the absurd Realm First Illustrious Jewel Craft. 23,000, like, uh, let's see. Should we look at his armory, guys? Oh, no. I mean, I mean, like he—he's—he's he's going through. He just through made his... a nice video, dude. He's not fucking complaining about shit. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Let's go. Absurd realm first illustrious jewel crafter. Okay. Why did I get this? Why did Why did I do what needed to be done to get this? To Point be fair, I, I want to make one thing clear. This guy obviously knows what he's talking about. Like, even if you, even if we disagree with what he's saying in the video. I think that I think that he deserves to be hurt. He's played like he has look he has more achievement points and like more shit than like ninety nine percent of you guys in the chat. Okay, like he's probably played the game more than you guys have. Uh, doesn't mean he knows everything about it, right? <clears throat> he has the old mounts. He's gotten you know a bunch of other shit too. I mean, come on, the, the guy's played the game first. He's got over twenty thousand achievement points. I, I think his opinion matters. It is yes, I have played a lot of World of Warcraft. Okay. Okay. In August 2019, Blizzard Entertainment launched World of Warcraft Classic, a recreation of World of Warcraft more or less as it existed in 2006 towards the end of the vanilla game's lifespan after all the new content was released but before any expansions were added. While not a pure recreation, the deviations are small and few, most being concessions to the fact that WoW itself changed dramatically over the course of its first year. For example, one of the more dramatic, anachronistic changes is the inclusion of the in-game clock, a feature that originally wasn't added to the game until June 2008. All disgusting. Absolutely fucking disgusting. Like, I, I can't believe that they would add this into the game. Uh, I, I, I don't understand at all. Like, this is, this is ridiculous. Like, how the fuck could they do this? Like, adding in the in-game clock. That's where we draw the line, guys. Almost no four changes. Years after launch, care has even been taken to recreate period authentic inconvenience, such as the bespoke recreation of spell batching, originally yeah. designed to work within the limits of dial up internet, which will in turn lead to things like canceling an ability only for the ability to cast anyway, or being well out of range well, of monsters while they continue to hit you in the back of the head. Hey, but returning arms. to the Azeroth that was 15 years later is an interesting experience. Okay. It lays bare all the strengths and flaws of the game and really calls attention to the fact that World of Warcraft was kind of bad. Alright, I'm just gonna try to... Yeah. Let's be fair, guys. There's a lot of really stupid ass shitty things in the game, right? I mean, like, let's be real. I mean, there were a lot. I'm like in classic WoW. Like, I mean, it's like you you have to click a button. Like, it don't automatically dismount you. Like, there's plenty of things in classic WoW that suck, right? I mean, like, come on, guys. There's plenty of things. Let's let's at least hear them out. Oh, oh, oh. are you stuck? 
fuck you. Are you f***ing kidding me? Well, it, it's bad, but it's also really some, good. Some. I mean, it's still a lot of fun, but it's also pretty garbage. It's garbage, but it's still a classic. Okay. Here, since I'm already in this hole, let me dig my way out. I really like to revisit old computer role-playing games. The genre has, through most of the history of electronic gaming, found itself at the locus of gaming technology, pushing both graphical capabilities and systems complexity. They were in their heyday, often at the cutting edge of what the personal computer could do and what a video game could even be. This, we used however, to have these games. also means that they're often quite experimental, which in turn brings with it a lot of compromises that modern players need to make in order to engage. Yeah. Controls are typically unusual, frustrating, unintuitive, or unresponsive, and it's likely there's at least one vital game system that is utterly inscrutable. The game assuming you have the time, patience, and inclination to devise its operation through brute trial and error. Ultima Underworld is Yeah, that's a complete true. That's a that's a complete true. I remember I played this game King's Quest, man. Like back in the day, back in the 90s, man. I played King's Quest. Fuck, man. Oh my god. That was the worst game. That was the worst game, and I loved it. Like, that's all I... Because I, you said it's so stupid, man. But it was the only game that we really had to play. It, was, it just made me so mad. The first retail game with a fully 3D environment, but the underlying systems for character movement are pretty <laughs> immature. It's not very precise with how facing translates to direction, leading to a lot of times where the player character is walking forwards, but at a, at a kind of slanted angle. Dungeon Master yeah. 2 has a magic system revolving around combinations of symbols representing abstract concepts with no guidance on what anything actually does. The manual gives a bit of help by at least telling you that the first set of symbols indicate power level, what a shit but at game. the end, straight up tells the player to literally trial and error their way through. Most of these games will allow you to just casually softlock all progression by throwing away something vital, either on purpose or by accident. I hate that about games. I literally fucking hate that about games. Whenever there are games that you can accidentally just fuck yourself over in. Like, you can just say, oh, oops, I accidentally threw away my keys and I need to complete the game. You know, I, I hate games that do that. But, but, I do like the idea of giving people a completely open environment, not telling anybody anything about the game, and saying, okay, <laughs> here you go. You know, it's fun. Uh, I think that'd be awesome. I think the only difference is that back in 1995, whenever these fucking games were made, the whole context of it was completely different. Because the games are really annoying and hard to play to begin with, just because of the nature of the, the computer requirements. But it's not impossible for a modern audience to submerge themselves in the games, yep. and once you're over the hump, it's generally pretty rewarding to see what originally sold players on Lands of Lore, Ultima Underworld, or Elder Scrolls Arena, to peek into the history of modern games and see the genesis of ideas, systems, controls, and vocabulary that persist to this day. The vocabulary thing's a big part of it, man. Like, you, you go back and you watch any of these old fucking videos, or these old games. Bro, they're using, like, fucking... They're using, like, college words and shit. Like, it's like all these fucking, like, uh, illuminate instead of light up. You know, like, all, all these things, like, uh, a bulwark of defense rather than a shield. It's like, everything is, like, elevated. Everything's fucking elevated. Just, you know, maybe keep a walkthrough or strategy guide handy. This is much of the WoW Classic experience. There's several distinct humps for a modern player to get over, things that are by today's standards hostile, unintuitive, and obnoxious, but adapt to them, and there's an interesting and rewarding game on the other side. I have also found that it's actually easier to adjust to now than it was in 2004, specifically because Classic is essentially a complete product. While Blizzard hasn't activated all the content that Classic will contain, we know what all of it is, which has the odd effect of making it feel a lot more self-contained and easier to accept the jank as just part of the package and charm. Just before we jump deeper into the jank of Classic, I do think it bears mentioning that WoW itself exists in the context of the game it was meant to compete with, 
but ultimately all but crushed. EverQuest WoW was, from conception onwards, meant to be the friendly version of EverQuest, and elements of classic that feel exhausting today. They spent more time having her ass move around than they probably spent on that UI. I mean, really, like, what the fuck, dude? I mean, that's, like, uh, uh, wow. Like, why can't we have games like this anymore? This is amazing such as the relatively small number of quick travel flight points scattered around the world, were positively indulgent compared to EverQuest. You mean you can just fly all the way across the world? Let me go get my monocle and top hat. Will yep. I be serving hors d'oeuvres on this flight? Oh, you think there aren't enough spiders in Dustwallow that it's going to take forever to get all the venom you need for that damn shield quest? It's yeah, pretty annoying. Well, out here in Crescent Reach, there are three snakes. Three! Three snakes! Yep. Sure, by modern standards, it feels like a pointless waste of time to make the player return to a class trainer and spend silver in order to acquire new abilities and improve old ones, mm -hmm. but when you put it in the context of EverQuest, where buying spells and learning spells were two different things, and it was possible to buy a spell you couldn't learn, and also some spells you needed to find as drops from random monsters, World of Warcraft was very much the noob-friendly approach. Why, look. That's true. EverQuest, to me, whenever I saw it, whenever I saw the, like, how complicated and, like, weird EverQuest was, I was like, I don't want to play this. Right? I mean, there, there's absolutely a point to me, I think it is for everybody, right, where it's like, okay, this is too convoluted and too complex for it to be enjoyable. And for me, EverQuest was that. Like, I, I just, I thought it was too complex and convoluted and confusing to enjoy it. Uh, but wow, I, I liked it a lot. And I guess that's the way some people feel about Classic WoW versus BFA. You can even see all the spells you'll eventually be able to yep. learn. Oh god, they're so expensive. Game, please. Please, game. I just, I just, I just want to buy my raptor. It's a great I game. I just need a raptor. That's not to say that all the humps are contextual improvements over EverQuest. Some of it is just bad on its own, or obviously incomplete. Yeah. World of Warcraft was pushed out the door probably a good six months early, leading to a pretty substantial and well-documented disparity in quality between the stuff the developers had been working on the longest, namely Eastern Kingdoms and the Alliance starting zones, and the stuff they had been working on the least, Kalimdor and the Horde starting zone. Anybody can tell that. Yeah, they didn't care about the horde. Nobody does. Uh, and this is this is a good thing, right? Obviously, it's a good thing. Uh, I, I'm I'm very happy about this. And this is what happened in Diablo three too. The exact same thing happened in Diablo three, but it was slightly different, right? Uh, the Act 1 was beta tested to hell and back. Everybody beta tested Act 1. Everybody knew everything about Act 1. People were completely fucking prepared to do Act 1. Act 2 came out, and literally the first fucking mob... The first fucking mob, these little uh, wasps, would shoot these baby wasps at you. And the baby wasps would go invisible, and you'd have to track their fucking project trajectory and make sure that you're not standing in front of them. Uh, it was completely buggy and terrible. They spent all of their time perfecting Act 1, and they did all their beta testing in Act 1, and Acts 2 through 4 were complete trash. Bones. There's a few standout examples, like the area around Black Fathom Deeps in Western yeah. Ashenvale being little more than a rough draft, which maybe looks just kind of old and junky at first glance, but yeah. is a stark contrast when compared to areas like Shadowfang Keep or That's the Wayland Caverns. The entire zone of Ashara is largely devoid of quests, not completely yeah. empty, but hardly the number or density that you would expect from a zone of its size. There's even a substantial number of NPC camps scattered throughout, staged with furniture it was and flags, but never populated. And oh god, this character is too low to be here. Oh god, oh god, oh no, oh no. Yeah, it was. It's completely unfinished. That's what it was. Ifs in chat. The paladin talent trees weren't implemented until the game finally launched, yep. and were clearly a last-minute rush job. With notable highlights being the holy tree, ostensibly a single-target healing specialization. Yep. Let's just take a short tour through this. The first tier contains improved Lay on Hands, which adds a small one minute armor buff to an emergency heal with an hour long cooldown. 
The second tier has Revelation, which reduces the cooldown of Lay on Hands by up to 20 minutes, giving it a mere 40 minute cool only down. 40 minutes the third guys tier begins the chain of talents Amazing. leading to the tree's capstone ability and those three talents are a damage boost to a single ability an aura that increases holy damage dealt by your party and the capstone ability holy shock an instant cast medium range damage spell in the healing tree there was a lot of I mean, they they clearly had no, no fucking idea what to do with Paladins at all. All they knew yeah. when they made Paladins was that ah, this is the beginner starter class, like Hunters, whatever. Just let them auto-attack forever. You know? They had no fucking idea. I, I actually like the Warrior class tree. I do. Uh, I think that almost everything with the Warrior class tree works together very well. Uh, every talent has its own purpose and use. Uh, the only one that I think is actually really bad is improved shield block. Everything else I think is good. Uh, I, I like all of these other... Oh yeah, improved cleave is kind of shitty too. Uh, but other than that, I think that all of these other abilities have their own unique uses and are cool in their own way. So actually, like I'm happy with the warrior class tree a lot. I liked a lot more the way that the old class trees were versus the new class talent things. Because... I liked how you could mix and match the different talent trees. I think Blizzard later on started restricting it to where you had to get like your capstone talent in order to put talents in the other trees. And that's where I think things really started going downhill. Stuff like this floating around, some of it easier to change than others, and in a lot of ways yeah. the first year of World of Warcraft's life was spent just kinda getting He's the done. game finished. Yeah. Some of the abrasive moments just like really just come down to different expectations. The massive and massively multiplayer was always a lot smaller than it ever felt, most of the heavy lifting being done by clever design, pressing players into interactions that felt more substantial than they really were. WoW just wasn't actually built to have that many players doing something in the same area at the same time. Well, Single not. quest areas can typically only support three to eight players at a time, any more than that, and it quickly leads to overcompetition with players standing around just waiting for more opponents to spawn. Yep. While this encourages grouping up, it only does so to a point. It's you also annoying. You can't get credit for most quests if there are more than five players in your group, and a second full group is enough to strip a quest area bare like locusts. That's what we would do, right? Just whenever we were leveling, we'd just show up, all five of the boys, like, yo, what up? And we'd just kill everything. And people get pissed off about that. Yeah, whatever, right? But that's the way it goes. It's like in Classic WoW, I, I think he's completely right. Like, Classic WoW apparently did have dynamic respawns, according to, I think, Kevin Jordan said this. But they weren't denying dynamic respawns in the same way that, like, we have now in Retail WoW. Where it's like, if there's 10 people in the zone, or, like, 20 people or 50 people in the zone, the mobs just respawning one, one, one after another. It was much slower than it is now. So, paradoxically, there's a lot of time in the massively multiplayer game spent looking for places to play alone. Yep. Not for any other reason than just to, like, know that Holy you Holy crap. Oh is that God. the line? <laughs> See, like that right there. Oh my God. <laughs> what the fuck, that's dude? The line. See, that's, that's the line. Jesus Christ, man. Okay, okay, that, that is a lot. So Dan, cue it up. I want to die. This is... Here's what you do if you run into a situation like this. You leave. You go somewhere else, and you farm random fucking mobs until you just you just skip the quest and that's what i do with all kinds of quests in classic like if i feel like that ah, this one's gonna take too long i just skip it and say fuck it i'm not gonna deal with this i think that's the same everybody else says you skip it well yeah but then like it's like it, <coughs> everybody else is gonna try to skip it too and then it's just a shit show you still miss the tag and it's like who cares All that said, returning to WoW as it used to be is also an enchanting experience in many ways. 
It reveals the flaws, yes, but also the things that have held up surprisingly well. Yeah. The cartoonish, exaggerated aesthetic of the Warcraft universe, always praised as a strength of the series, continues to shine. Even the chunky, blatantly low-poly assets have their own charm, and after a few minutes of play, quickly blend into the scenery. And there's some moments of windowing, places where the game creates a frame to guide the player's view, that remain stellar. One thing that really stands out to me is actually something I had forgotten about, because it was replaced in the changes to the game over the years. The opening hours of the Orc and Troll quest lines lead the player out of the Valley of Trials, down the road to Razor Hill, through the pass in Dry Gulch Ravine, culminating in their entrance to Orgrimmar, the capital city of the Horde. The big boy. The path leading into the city leads the player to this frame at the threshold, the wide open space of the Valley of Honor with the bank, flight tower, and zeppelin framed against the sky. It's a compelling composition, evocative, fantastical. It's a moment that really strikes the imagination and makes the world feel so much bigger than you ever thought it would be. The version of this moment as it exists now was put into the game in 2010 with the Cataclysm expansion. A huge portion of that expansion was dedicated to revamping the original. That's completely right. That's completely right. Like, I, I, I totally agree. Um, I, no, it, the thing is, like, the old one, like, the, the, the old Orgrimmar, <coughs> I think Blizzard forgot about the idea of simplicity also being beautiful, right? It's that you want to have, there's a certain type of, like, serene nature to the classic WoW zones to where they're not over-designed. And I think that there are so many things in, in current WoW that are just simply over-designed. And I think classic WoW shows that a lot more because we get to see the two of them right next to each other but I, I agree with what he's saying there's a number of times where you get to see like the grandeur of like stormwind and you walk into iron forge or you walk into uh orgamar right for example and there are those moments where you get to see the whole open world right you look over the dam of Kazmodan or whatever on like lock Madon, and like you can see all of the wetlands or at least part of it right depending on how shitty your computer was and like that kind of stuff was really cool world's content since most of it was at least six years old with some art assets being as old as 2003 or even 2002 mm -hmm. the resolution disparity between launch content and stuff from the second yeah. and upcoming third expansions was stark and it was a gulf that was only likely to grow wider as more content was added additionally players have been clamoring for freeform flight to be added to the original continents a much loved feature integral to both the burning crusade and wrath yeah. of the lich king expansions but the original environments had never been designed for freeform flight the old world ultimately consisted of a series of valleys scooped out of a giant mass with questing areas joined by large blocks of featureless terrain carefully hidden behind impassable rocks and hills the yep. flight paths all wound through handcrafted vistas designed to make the world look fully formed and sculpted while well, obscuring wasn't. the giant empty spaces in between. <laughs> it was very much an yeah. amusement park facade, and while some players enjoyed taking a peek behind the scenery, the out-of-bounds areas weren't acceptable if it was going to be something all players could access just by flying up over the tops of the hills. The revamp was in a lot of ways needed, but a lot of what they revamped things to was kind of questionable. Cataclysm as a whole is not a fondly remembered expansion, and a big part of that is in the details of the decisions that were made. Blizzard They're mad because they changed the fucking game. Like, they changed Azeroth. You had all these memories based around, oh, I did these quests back in the day, and now you can't do those quests back in the day. Old Blanchie is dead. Why they didn't have to kill old Blanche? It, it it did not have to happen, and I, I get that. Like, oh yeah, you want to have like an emotional draw, whatever. They did not have to kill old Blanche for it's, a CSI joke. For a CSI joke, exactly. And it's this, it's the same one with the uh, Ungoro Kodo. They killed the Ungoro Kodo too. No reason for that. Absolutely no fucking reason for that shit. But they did it anyway. And they killed people's memories of the game. I don't think they should have done the Cataclysm uh, revamp until they had the technology to have both of them in the game simultaneously. To my opinion. 
decided that rather than merely updating the terrain and cities to look more cohesive with newer, yeah. higher resolution content, and rather than just filling the voids between zones in a way that would look boring but presentable when flying, mm -hmm. they would instead dramatically alter the world itself in a massive cataclysm and advance uh -huh. the timeline so that the state of the entire main world was concurrent with the endgame content. This had some side effects. By advancing yeah. the timeline, many of the new zones were now sequels to their original versions, following up on the storylines that played out before oh, that the Cataclysm. Yeah. But these new storylines only made sense if you were already familiar with the previous story, yep. which was now no longer accessible. This kind of self-reference... That... Oh storytelling is ultimately the blood of cataclysm with a lot of moments in the expansion that's the blood of the whole fucking game like that's the whole problem is that everything in the game is built on context from 10 years ago that most of the player base doesn't know about whenever you go into classic wow you're on an empty fucking clean slate in in classic you step into a world that like yeah there's context from warcraft 3 etc but you don't feel like the context is there. You're just in an open world. Whereas like now in BFA, not only is there context with the stories that's based off of things that were been in the game forever, but there's also a ton of other contexts within systems, right? With reforging, with respecking, with, uh, you know, talent changes, etc. There are all of these different like little micro things that a new player would never understand intuitively that you have to know like eight years of uh, history of changes behind this system to understand why it's in the state that it's in now. It's just confusing. In being retreads of older moments from WoW's history delivered with a cheeky smile and a wink to the camera. Yeah. Mortals that fancy themselves heroes have entered the Broken Hall. Oh, I do hope this raid will amuse me more than the last. In this regard, the new entrance to Orgrimmar is no longer intended to welcome new players to a yeah. wide open world, no longer framed to spark the imagination, but a blunt shock for old players, an overhaul of layout and aesthetic, signaling the change in leadership from Thrall to Garrosh. A mulleted electric guitar solo screaming, This ain't your daddy's horn! It is incredibly trivial, yeah. but it is emblematic of a fair criticism of how the game has evolved over a decade and a half, increasingly focusing inward. Well, it's like, how many of these little fucking chain spike things do you need? Right, like, it's like, I get them making a really, really well-designed Orgrimmar, and I think that the new Orgrimmar looks pretty decent. I, I, I like it, but at the same time, there's something to be said with the old Orgrimmar, too. And as I said, I think that really they should have just made new zones instead of trying to revamp the old ones. It's always a mistake to try to revamp the old stuff because people get nostalgic about it. I think they should just make new stuff and just have people go to the new places. I'm not even sure I should be saying criticism, though, because it's not even critical as much as it is merely descriptive. World of Warcraft has undeniably changed over the years, but the goodness or badness of most of these changes really comes down to a question of values. What do the players yeah. and creators like in the game? What do they want out of the game? And what does an ideal Money. evening of play look like? They're not really questions with right and wrong answers, and no matter what answer you pick, it probably doesn't have some moral implication underneath. You're not a bad person if you want to quietly solo queue for dungeons and go through the game with an absolute minimum of social friction. Likewise, it's not a superior tier of gaming to prefer a game with aggressive social dependency and time sink gatekeeping. This is- Ah! Uh... Okay. Okay. I, I agree with that. But I do think that the game should cater towards people who want to have those interactions. <laughs> I, I don't necessarily think that the players are superior, but I think that Blizzard should develop the game for those players instead, if that makes sense. So not necessarily the, like, yeah, obviously if you do Raid Finder, you're not a terrible person. If you do Dungeon Finder or whatever, you're not a terrible person. But at the same time, uh, if you, if you develop a game around those people, it becomes a terrible game. A and I think that's the difference. 
It's it's an MMO. Yeah, I mean, it's an MMO. Like, you should make the game around the people that want to have social dependencies and time sinks, not necessarily the people that don't want to deal with that. Where I feel the, the issue is that Blizzard, Blizzard stopped developing for those hardcore players and started developing for the casual players because there are more of them. And then they realize the reason why they're casual players is they don't really care a whole lot about the game. To acknowledge that a lot of the clamor for WoW Classic has been controversial, fraught with ego and drama as a number of the high profile personalities leading the charge are known for their toxicity and vitriol having made something of a career in the very small but highly competitive niche of complaining about world of warcraft that's true the game they want to make it different they want to this do is my just a little bit different oh maybe i just want group find this is my best speech i've ever done i want to say this right now this is my best speech i've ever done like, if you haven't listened to this speech, this is my number one greatest speech I've ever done about this uh, th this whole classic wild thing. Uh, yeah, I actually, I probably should want to watch it again just for context. Hey, my gear doesn't match. Maybe I'll just transmog this helmet. Fuck you. You're going to wear that pink helmet and you're going to like it. That's right. Those chromatic boots looking like a goddamn clown with your DPS warrior? That's you. Your face, it's a square. All right? You Eight love pixels. It. You're going to love it. It's going to be the exact same. We're not going to give up. We're not going to stop. No changes. Yeah. The basic argument from these outrage merchants is that WoW, as it currently exists, is bad. It worked. You can say anything you want to say. You can criticize any way you want to criticize. But it worked. Always keep that in mind. It always works. Unlike some point in the past where WoW was good. And I really need to point out mm -hmm. that this argument has been working for over a decade. Yeah. It is not a new phenomenon by any means. Why having badges be given by every single freaking instance in the entire game is an absolutely awful idea. Possibly, in fact, the worst idea I have ever seen Blizzard come up with in their entire history. Why was it bad? Right, this goes beyond everything. This goes beyond putting Nax version 2 in the game. This goes beyond that was stupid. every stupid thing they have ever yeah. done. I mean, really. This goes beyond the whole, hey, let's give them some Black Temple level epics for running characters. No, it goes beyond that. It's incredibly pants on head in every possible reason. I never watched any of these videos back in the day. Like, I never gave a fuck about anybody's opinion about WoW. Like, I would literally just watch guides. I'd watch, like, Hobbs solo shit or, like, Athene do a video. Like, I, I never cared about the state of the game back then. I was like, listen, dude, I just want to play the fucking game, dude. Like, that was it. I never cared. I, I, I always started caring whenever I started making videos about it. Like, I never, I always listen to other people's opinions. Like, yeah, that's stupid. Like, that's dumb. I don't want to hear that. So I started making my own videos, talking about it by myself. There's no consensus on when that see. peak was, when WoW was truly the best, but it's generally- Vanilla. It was the best in vanilla. He agreed by that community to be somewhere during the first three phases of the game, between yeah. 2004 and 2010. I would this agree has that. created yeah. an environment where WoW Classic has been positioned explicitly in contrast yeah. to Battle for Azeroth as the real world of Warcraft, the pure experience, spiritually untainted, the mythological prelapsarian version, yep. an experience so perfect that it will restore World of Warcraft to the position of cultural relevance that it held when seemingly everyone and their dog had a subscription. I think he's conflating two things here. Uh, I, I think that like, so Classic WoW is the pure version of the game, but there are plenty of things that are pure that aren't necessarily in their greatest state. You know, there's plenty of, uh, you know, pure materials that you get out of a mine and you smelt those materials together to create like a really powerful sword or something like that. So the idea that purity and making it in its original state means it's in the best state that it is and it's going to retain the game's cultural relevance. I, I feel like putting those two things together is, is conflating two things that most people don't always agree on. It's effectively a church schism in video game form. Yeah. That level of intensity that. in the conversation yeah. can make productive analysis somewhat 
difficult, as the arguments for that position aren't always coherent. A big hitch in these kinds of public conversations is that there's a performance angle, and people tend to skew towards the answers that they believe are correct, or the answers that they believe the audience wants to hear, the opinion that you're supposed to have rather than the answers that are true. They tend to lean really heavily on value statements. I don't know about that. So uh, let's let's think about that a little bit more. And, and so, like for me personally, I can say like, yeah, I don't do that or whatever. But of course, people are going to trend towards things that they believe are true. I mean, that's kind of just like by the nature of why would you trend towards something that you don't believe is true? And I I, I don't know. I, I feel like that's. Uh, you want me to do that? No. Well, I mean, that's not true at all. Like, for example, like I, I've said a number of things that are not things that people agree with. Like, I don't think that flying is that bad for the game. Uh, I don't think that, uh, let's see. There's like, let me think, uh, fuck. I don't think transmog completely ruined the game. I think it changed the game. It wouldn't have it in the game, but I wouldn't take it out right now. I don't think pet battles are bad for the game. Uh, and, and these are plenty of opinions that I have about Classic WoW that a lot of other people disagree with who are part of the community. So the idea that, you know, at least like for me personally, uh, that I only hold opinions because the audience has that same opinion and I want them to understand or listen to what I'm saying is, I think, completely untrue. I mean, in a lot of ways, I, I've disagreed with people in a lot of ways. Like, you can look at the LFR videos that I made, right? That was a hugely contentious video because that's what I believed. And that's what I thought was the case. Answers that they believe the audience wants to hear, the opinion that you're supposed to have yeah. rather than the answers that are true. They well, how, how do you know that the answers are true? I, I mean, I, well, how, how do you how do you know? All right, well, let's let's see what he says. They tend to lean really heavily on value statements, appeals to the okay. things that the wider social group believe are superior qualities, which can lead to some hot nonsense, like saying that World of Warcraft was best when it was hardest back in Classic, which is a comical statement because Classic just isn't very hard. Now, I do want to walk a fine yeah. line here, because when it comes to talking about video games and difficulty, yeah, that's true. the conversation turns into yeah. a swamp super fast, because the language that we use to talk about the systems and interactions isn't particularly well developed, so people end up just shouting the same words at each other with different implicit meanings, and it goes nowhere. Mainstream video games bias towards tests of reflexes or the ability to execute a complex pattern consistently or with precision, and this is a thing that you're supposed to like and desire and appreciate. The vast majority of the challenge in World of Warcraft Classic, however, is extremely simple from an execution standpoint yeah. and is really more of a test of patience. I'm not saying that is a bad thing, by the way. Tests of endurance, mm. tests of patience are a form of difficulty. It is a skill that is being tested, but it's still not what people are typically referring to when they say hard games. WoW Classic is a very slow game and it punishes mistakes with heavy time costs, but yes. even then it's not exactly as taxing as a marathon. Most of the content can be trivialized, the vast majority of it is not particularly difficult to execute, there's no requirement to do it in a single setting or a tight time span, and it is certainly not more difficult to execute than basically anything that came afterwards. True. Absolutely completely true. But I, I think that like there's different levels of difficulty, right? There's like there's difficulty in like Dark Souls, right? Where you have to like know the patterns, like what he was saying. There's also difficulties in having to play a game for a really, really long period of time in order to get something, like farming the Winter Spring Frost Saber. There's difficulties in uh being just like knowing a lot about the game and just understanding it in a way that you can do a raid and be a raid leader. Each of these different types of things are difficulties, but they're completely different types of difficulties. Now, Classic was very hard in some ways. It was much harder than retail for leveling. Like, you have to pay attention a lot more on Classic for leveling. And so, if you want to use the term difficulty and talk about how difficult content is for leveling, etc., then I think that you'd have to go back and look and see how easy it is in BFA and compare the two out of that. 
Um, I, I think that like, yeah, execution demanding equals difficulty. Well, there's a lot of things that make things difficult. If things take a long time, that's a type of difficulty too. It just the problem. The problem is that difficulty is defined in so many different ways that whenever you say things are hard, that doesn't really mean anything because to some people, something taking a long time makes it hard. And to other people, that just makes it boring. And so I think it's hard to say that because everybody has a different definition of what difficulty in a game is. All the difficulty is piled into a willingness to wait, to be cautious, to spend time recovering yeah. after every single Which I think fight. is difficulty and to an extent. And a failure of patience is yeah. typically met with a time sink as punishment. Oh, I would so agree there's this. this syllogism at play where we take three suppositions. A, hard games are good. B, I liked World of Warcraft in 2006. C. I like good games. I liked World of Warcraft, and I like good games, therefore World of Warcraft was good, and good games are hard games, therefore World of Warcraft must have been hard because I like it, and I like good games. The okay. Damn! What, what do you... Why do you say that? That's fucking... High IQ. Is it? That's enormous IQ, I think. <sighs> of course, you disagree because you're a contrarian, so go ahead. Hard games are good is not an exclusionary statement that says that the only thing that makes games that are good makes them hard. Is, is it they're hard? There are plenty of other things that make games good besides being hard. It's not an exclusionary statement. Classic WoW is good in a number of ways. One of the ways is that it's demanding and it requires a lot of effort and time. That does not necessarily make it hard in the eyes of everybody. The raids are easy, unless you consider getting into the raids <coughs> as part of the difficulty, in which case then you would say maybe they are hard. And it's not about being... I, I think that hard for me, right? I don't think that hard games are fundamentally good. I think that fulfilling games are fundamentally good. And games that are fulfilling usually have an element of difficulty to them usually uh or an element of investment to them and i think that investment is usually correlated with difficulty because you have to invest yourself more into something that's difficult because it takes longer and so for me there's like an a b c d e f and g right but this is basically true missed the point wait it's a logical conclusion this proves that wait what yeah, man. No, I, I'm confused here. Just a minute. L let me let me see. I I, I want to actually make sure that I'm not wrong about this. His point is referring to why people that believe WoW Classic is hard. I'm not. I'm not talking about like no. His statement here, the ABC, right? Like I I get that. Yeah, of course. But I'm talking about like my own personal opinion. You, you know what I mean? Uh, if all it's only hard games are good. Yeah, no, it's not. It's, uh, it's disjunctive syllogism, bacon logic. No, I, I understand what he's saying, right? I, I get it. But what I'm trying to say here, face to go, singer to 10 gifted community subs. I appreciate that very much, man. It's a logical argument. Uh, it's not logical to automatically assume your preferences are fundamentally good. Well, no, of course not, right? But the point that I'm making is that I think that hard games are not fundamentally good. But oftentimes hard games are good because they require investment and the investment makes you fulfilled in completing the game. That's the only thing that I'm saying. Uh, difficulty making games good. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's all I'm trying to say. I just want to make sure that's clear. Did I F? Oh, shit. Yeah. Let's see if it's going to work. What time is it? Uh, it's 1145. Okay, uh, I think this should be good, right? Yeah, everything should be fine now. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Um, okay, I think that we're fine, right? Yeah, alright, good. He's saying some people use that rationale to justify why they think the game they like is good. Well, no, I talked about this myself with Dark Souls. I agree with them. I'm just saying, with in WoW's circumstance, I think it's more complicated from my own perspective. 
good, and good games are hard games, therefore World of Warcraft must have been hard because I like it and I like good games. This isn't really that weird. People do tend to be pretty bad at figuring out why they like the things they like, so they just assume yeah. that their stated values apply to the things they enjoy. And yes, to bring this back around, World of Warcraft has undeniably changed over the years, and the changes <laughs> have collectively been dramatic. Not just changes in terms of graphical updates, large swaths of new content, or the world overhaul of Cataclysm, but philosophically. The ideas answering questions like, what makes good content have shifted and morphed over the years, often subtly, sometimes drastically. I want to remove the outrage merchants yes. from the equation and contrast some of these changes honestly, because while on a personal level, I think a lot of people have been hoodwinked by outrage merchants into parroting bad syllogistic arguments, I don't think people are being disingenuous when they say they enjoyed WoW more in the past than they do in the present, and that it's not all nostalgia. Nostalgia is, of course, an important part of the overall picture. World of Warcraft landed at a really formative time for a lot of people, a time- I think that's true. I mean, the fact is, like, if you look at people that are playing Classic WoW, and they've been playing it for a month now, and they still like it, there's got to be something more to the game beyond, uh, what do you call it, uh, beyond just nostalgia. There's obviously something that's kept people playing the private servers and playing these different versions of WoW for years and years and years and years and years. And, and I, I don't think that it's fair just to criticize and, and categorize anybody who's criticized the current game as being an outrage merchant, right? Like, what am I saying? Like, you know, use one of my videos, right? What am I saying that's particularly a, an outrage merchant thing? Like, what... What specifically do I not like? Uh, I, I don't think that I'm saying a lot of things that are unreasonable. I say them in, you know, obviously, you know, like very weird ways. But for the most part, I think that I, I'm, I'm talking sense 99% of the time. And I'll defend anything that I'm saying. I don't think I'm being an outrage merchant at all. I, I think that they have done a lot of things that are bad for the game. I played the game a lot. And I think that's true. Now, I, I don't think I'm being an outrage merchant at all when they were in high school or in college and had a lot of free time and all their friends had a lot of free time and their life meshed well with the pace of the game and the yeah. game became their shared social space. That That's is fucking a amazing. potent element. But it's not the whole story. The hashtag no changes crowd has an entire warehouse of rose colored glasses, but that doesn't mean classic is devoid of value if you aren't wearing them. We can't uncross a river, but if we walk through this, we can maybe put together a reasonable portrait of the differences and understand why some players... Well, here, well, like, I think that, like, the whole no changes thing, like, people, yeah, people wanted the game to come out in the way that it was. Like, yes, that was the whole purpose. That was what we were advocating for. We wanted the game to release in the state that we wanted the game to be in because that's what we wanted. We wanted the original game. Duh. I mean, fucking duh. I, I, I don't see, like, this is not a no... Like, he's, I think he's painting it to make it look like the no changes people were being unrealistic or assholes. But, for one, we got what we wanted. We basically got what we wanted. Am, am I right? I mean, fuck, dude. It, it's, exactly, it's exactly it. I mean, yeah, I got, like, a few little baby things. But, like, for the most part, everybody's happy justifiably feel like they've been yeah. left behind by the changes over the years and yeah. in turn what classic has to offer right world of warcraft battle for azeroth is a very busy game there is a lot to do and the game has a tremendous array of content for players of all stripes ranging from player versus player competition to skill testing group content to trivial mini games and yep. arg style community treasure hunts with 15 like years of iteration, there are very few styles of play that aren't accounted for, in particular if you are in the majority of players that prefer a social solo experience. Meaning that you like having other people around, you like the multiplayer elements being seamlessly integrated and not a separate game mode, but you still prefer to spend the majority of your time playing alone. You don't want That's to how have I to coordinate multiple I, I like schedules playing by myself just to play the game. 
Not only is there a lot to do, but most of it can be completed in 10 to 20 minute chunks, with group activities taking bigger commitments of around 30 to 45 minutes in wow. the case of dungeons, or a couple hours in the case of raids. So it's an yep. environment where, depending on how much time you have to play, there's almost certainly something to do that is a structured task with concrete rewards. Island expeditions, arena, battlegrounds, mythic dungeons, raiding, pet battles, world quests, professions, achievements, collections, special events, oh my. In contrast, WoW Classic has relatively little variety when it comes to no. structured tasks. You do the there's same dungeons, shit. There's dungeons, there's quests, there's the same exact shit. there's raids, and eventually there will Congrats be PvP so battlegrounds. Though, once you get to max level, well... Quests are a finite resource. It's not even well, super difficult to complete Why every would you possible high-level quest in the game. There yeah. is a very narrow and deliberate channel that players find themselves in. Raids. Questing leads to dungeons, and dungeons lead to raids. There it is. And raids in Classic mostly require 40 players, so they're not exactly the kind of thing you just casually toss together with the lads. In fact, really, in order to field a raid of 40 uh, players, you need a pool of about 60 that. to 80 players minimum to cover for different roles. People who need to leave early, people who can be there on Tuesday and Thursday but not Wednesday, people yeah. who aren't part of the core group but are basically the supply line for the raid providing materials and consumables. So there's this pretty self-evident contrast between the game as it used to exist with relatively few defined activities and the game as it currently exists, a wash in things to do. But that's just a surface level analysis and this is where I think things get interesting, where we see something of what has been left behind. All okay. of that content, all the different tasks and parallel progression streams, they have been added bit by bit over the years to free players up so that they don't feel trapped in that narrow channel of progression. Yeah, where but now you they either don't care. found a group of people you could raid with or you kind of ran out of things to do. That's good because there are absolutely things about that arrangement that really, really suck. The requirements in terms of time, players, and materials effectively creates a corporate environment where guilds that have the resources to raid accrue a lot of social power. Back in 2006, it wasn't really that unusual for a given server to only be able to support one yep. or two active raids per faction. Yep, Actually, it was in great. 2005, the server hardware itself literally couldn't support more than one raid engaging Nefarian at the same time, and groups would need to coordinate across factions because if two groups pulled, the latency would spike, and if three or more pulled, the instant server would crash. Hashtag no changes! Which meant that you needed to bend to their... I don't think anybody who was no changes wanted the server latency to be the same as that. I mean, come on, guys. Like, I, I think this guy's misrepresenting the way that people who didn't want changes in the game wanted to see the game develop and be designed. I, I, don't, I don't think He's anybody... He's a liar! Well, He's a liar! This video's terrible! Well, no, I, I don't think it's terrible. I, I think that... I think that very clearly he wants to emphasize the fact that he played the game a lot back in the day. And because he played the game a lot back in the day, he remembers all of the little things that, you know, were, inco were inconsequential for most people, but also very big annoyances. And whenever you say known changes, you know, you're also talking about that. I, I think that every reasonable person who said no changes knew they didn't actually mean keep the bugs in the game. But I would rather have the bugs in the game than have changes like transmog added in the classic anyway, right? So I would rather have to... This is basically the way that I looked at it, right? This is the same thing with like the, uh, the, the looting bug, for example. I would rather have the looting bug in the game than have transmog in the game. Right, I would rather make the game more similar to is joking. Well, no, it, I don't think he's joking because he, he's referred multiple times about the no changes crowd and how they were being unrealistic or outraged merchants or whatever. I think that he's not joking at all. I think this is what he thinks. Uh, yeah, because it's what he said earlier in the video. Seriously. Their schedule and maybe needed to put up with a lot of yeah. toxicity and harassment just to play a video game. Because of the way that the various mechanics interact, success one week sets players up for more success next week. So guilds that are doing well tend to attract more players than they actually need, yep. while failure can quickly lead to a social death spiral as experienced and geared players quit or leave, increasing the odds of further failure. 
given that these raids represent a huge time commitment, it's not unusual for guilds to focus on hedging their bets and playing it safe, only bringing the best geared players with the most optimal classes. This can make it difficult, if not impossible, for players coming in late who don't already have the best gear and only have a few hours per week to play to even get an invite to a group. So there are very good reasons for a lot of the changes, in particular providing comparable progression tracks for players who want to play mostly alone or just with a small group of four, nine, ten friends instead yeah. of listening to 39 assholes screaming whenever someone pulls whelps in Anixia's lair. That's what idiot who goes and aggros something he ain't supposed to is not getting any f***ing item for the next two Oh weeks, man, okay, not to dude. Mention 200 yep. minus f***ing DKP. Is that enough f***ing motivation for you to f***ing this toxicity is actually a deliberate design choice in a sense. EverQuest and World of Warcraft were built on a concept of social dependency. The yeah. idea that the game was explicitly hostile to solo play and that it was basically impossible for a player to be truly self-sustaining. World of in, in WoW you can be, but like I think this is a good thing. Like having to depend on being social in the game is a good thing. I, I've always been a fan of this. I, I wish that I, I think Classic has a lot of this, and and BFA doesn't have enough of it. Warcraft, as the friendlier version of EverQuest, tempered that a lot. Yeah. You can get through most of the game solo, but it's definitely still there. Oh, yeah. Questing with one or two other people is substantially faster and <coughs> much safer. Since characters yes. often provide a force multiplying factor to one another, the increase in speed is more than simply linear. With a friend, you can do higher level quests a lot earlier, which reduces the amount of time spent moving between questing zones Going back and, and makes forth. it a little yep. less likely that you'll have to resort to grinding just to be able to move on to a new area. This social dependency is kind of compelling and interesting in its own right, but it has a few big weaknesses, namely okay. that it means players are essentially at the mercy of other players who may or may not be nice people, and it relies on there being other players in... That, that's Okay, so what he's saying about the other players is true, but what he just said I, d I don't think is true because I think that, yes, obviously you're going to deal with assholes. Like, you have to deal with assholes because you deal with real people. Anytime you have a genuine interaction with another real person, you have the opportunity to run into an asshole, right? And this is just the truth. Yeah, I mean, this is just the way that assholes are. Uh, another thing, another factor with this is the fact that if you are the asshole and you consistently join groups and people keep kicking you out, it's actually a socialization measure that prevents people from just being these wild, uncontrolled assholes. Like this guy that just got kicked out of the guild that keeps trying to get attention on stream, he made his other guild called the Olympus Spurg Voice, he's probably the guild master of it, trying to trade me back the tabard for the last 20 minutes that I've been reacting to this video. People like that aren't going to find a group because nobody wants to play with them or do anything with them. And I think that the fact that that can happen gives people, at least young people especially, it gives them an opportunity to be in that open space and have those social relationships that they can't have in real life with the same type of just, you know, freedom to them because it doesn't really matter what happens in the game and to make the mistakes and to learn how to act in real life around other people. So I, I think that the socialization measures and to say that's a bad thing is completely incorrect. I think it's actually a very, very good thing because it goes both ways. It stops people from being assholes, I think, more than it empowers people to be assholes because usually nobody else wants to play with an asshole. And if there's one asshole and five normal people, four normal people, they're going to probably just not play with the asshole in the same space as one another. Yeah. Right now, in the first months after release, WoW Classic is a lot of fun to level through because it's in the sweet spot where there's a lot of players all kind of spread throughout the whole level range. So no matter what level you're at or which stage of a quest chain you're on, there's probably someone else nearby who's either at the exact same spot or pretty close to it. 
If you need help with an elite opponent that you can't take on solo, then during prime time it's probably only going to take a few minutes or so before someone else comes along looking to do the same quest. Yep, but I've done that myself. But as time goes on, Just more and more players one. accumulate at the level cap, and while some players compulsively level new characters over and over, yep. most players focus on a single character. <coughs> the result is that as the overall population caps out, the local population in the lower and mid-level zones drops dramatically, and social dependency only works if there's other players around to be dependent on. Back in two Has that really happened? Like, I remember back in 2006, for example, like, there were tons of people leveling. Like, I, I never really worried about that. Like, maybe it's on, like, other servers? But for me, like, it's way worse in retail than in classic. Well, yeah, because retail, like, it takes you, like, two days to get to max level. But in, in classic, I remember, like, we never had trouble. Like, there was always a huge amount of people leveling up in any zone that I was in. I, I don't know. Like, maybe I'm, like, uh, it's already happening. I don't know. I was leveling the other day, and I saw plenty of other people in the zones. Yeah, it should. I, I don't know. 2006, it wasn't even particularly weird to be literally the only player in Stone Talon or Desolus at any given time. So it definitely needs to be kept in mind that while a lot of changes have been made to speed up leveling to yeah. reduce social dependency, these changes have been made to address real problems that emerge as MMOs mature, and a lot of these problems loom over the future of Classic. So Blizzard has added all of this other stuff to provide more dynamic alternatives to widen the ranges that characters can quest together, to speed up the journey from level 1 to level 120, and to ensure that players at level cap aren't trapped on a dead server or held hostage by the only assholes with a raiding guild, or simply excluded entirely from group play because they chose a class that is less optimal than another. But I feel like Blizzard trying to do that, and like I think Blizzard has made a huge mistake by trying to do that. Every single effort I think Blizzard has made trying to rein in and control player behavior has actually done more harm for the game than good. And I think that whenever you go back and you play Classic, which is in general like a pretty fair game in terms of like you can interact with people however you want, I would say a lot of those different reasons and everything like that those things are it's just an open environment where you can interact with people and i i like that a whole lot more than what retail wow has now where you have all these limitations and controlling variables and the way that you can interact with other people and i think that the more that blizzard has tried to control the way that players interact with each other the more they've actually just removed the interactions entirely with all of that added stuff it is possible to reach a point where there's simply too much to do, mm -hmm. where there's so many parallel choices, all of which are at least somewhat comparable in terms of their worth, that it becomes paralyzing and difficult to focus. You can get a decent amount done, even if you only have 20 to 30 minutes to play, but that also means that over the course of an hour, you might be rapidly pinballing between a dozen small tasks, and the line between variety and chaos is a fine one. What's more, if everything is meaningful, if it's all significant content that provides a reward of appropriate value, and they're all on daily or weekly reset timers, well, at a certain point, it stops feeling like options and starts to feel like an obligation. You're right. It was like, uh, they started doing that in, in Wrath, dude. Like, in Wrath, that's whenever it started. Like, Burning Crusade was fine, but like, Wrath, you had to deal with the fucking badges, you had to deal with the, the raid resets, getting your different fucking emblems, uh, doing VOA, and like, all of this, like, reputations. Burning Crusade, actually, I don't think it happened in Burning Crusade, personally. I think it was Wrath. And, and like, Cataclysm and Mists of Pandaria, I think everybody can agree, that's never really happened. And you had all these obligations you had to do with daily quests and everything else in between. And, and like, yeah, Obviously, that's been one of the terrible things about retail is that they've created all of these different hoops that you have to jump through in order to get into the raids or do anything else like that, that they become just like all these obligations, right? Now you have to do Mythic Plus. Now you have to farm islands for the necklace level. And the issue is that like Blizzard has never really found a way to do this well, except for like back in Classic where everything you only had like one shot per week to get upgrades or, you know, make character progression, which, which is that 
if one person in the raid is doing it, it makes it to where everybody else in the raid kind of has to do that. And if, like, let's say you're, you, there's two warriors in the guild, one warrior is farming uh, island expeditions, the other warrior is not, and the one warrior who is, is getting, like, all of his secondary traits for his Heart of Azeroth, and he's doing more damage in the raid, well, then that warrior is going to get priority on loot items, you know, that like, re redistributed through personal loot, and they're going to be invited into the raid more often because they're more useful. And so it always trends towards rewarding the people that invest a lot more time into the game, which is a good thing, but at a certain point... It becomes toxic and harmful and unfun for people, and I think that's kind of what's happened. Running low on runes, you should really do your looking for raid runs for the week. Have you done your emissary quests for the day? Gotta get at least a plus 10 in for Don't the weekly cash. Your island expedition. Trial style and it's raid midnight. Tuesday, Wednesday. Heroic Can't alt run on Thursday. PvP Are you ever gonna finish that achievement? Here's where Classic has an unexpected yeah. strength. If there's nothing to do, if nothing is meaningful, then you are free to self-direct. Let's talk about grinding. Oh, okay. So Gravycast wants to know, what is grinding? Well... I don't think that you really are free to self-direct in Classic WoW. I don't agree with that. Uh, like, yeah, there's plenty of activities that you can do in the game if you want to create content for yourself, but you can say the same thing with Retail WoW. Like, you can self-direct in Classic a lot less, in my opinion, than you can in Retail WoW. Uh, in Retail WoW, there's eight different ways to get gear. In Classic WoW, there's one. You raid. So if you care about your character's power and your character's progression, you do one thing. You raid. That's it. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing either, but I'm saying that's absolutely not true. Like, there's... Classic WoW is much more open in the way that it allows you to choose your goals, but if your goals are the same as they are in Retail WoW, which is character progression, PvP, okay, yeah, you can do a little bit of PvP. There, there is that too. Uh, but besides that, like, that's two things. Whereas, like, you compare it now to Retail WoW, you have the dungeons, you have uh, Mythic Plus, you have PvP, you have raiding. Uh, I, I think that's, like, there's, like, one other thing, too, that you can do. If, like, I guess you can do, like, world quests or from out benthic gear, but that's, like, more of, like, a low-end type thing. There are more opportunities in, in current WoW to farm out your gear and do different stuff that didn't exist in Classic WoW, and they exist now in Retail WoW because players wanted them. But the problem with that is that they added so many repeatable ways to get gear that now we have titan forging and whatever else with that that you just have all these different things you have to do and you're constantly behind because there's always something something more that you can do and with classic one of the things that i like about it is the fact that you can finish it you can be done for the week it, it feels good. It's also like, man, I wish I had more shit to do. But at the same time, it's good to be finished. Because at least that means you look forward to the next Tuesday. While playing with Crystal. So grinding is when you keep killing the same mobs in a particular area just over and over and over again without the guidance of a quest. Oh, um, well, that didn't work out well. F's in chat. Grinding is something of a hallmark of early MMOs. It was pretty yeah. much taken for granted that at some point in playing the game, you would find yourself standing in a field, killing the same enemies over and over and over again. Just an endless rhythmic process that only ends when your bags are full and you decide, yeah, yeah. I guess I should head back to town. If you needed money to buy skills or a mount or new equipment, this wasn't the most efficient way to get it, but it was the most straightforward. <laughs> I just want my raptor. If a questing yep. area was too competitive, if there were lineups... That's why people dungeon grind. This is exactly why people dungeon grind. They don't want to fucking deal with the other bullshit or figure out the quest. They just dungeon grind. It's the simplest, easiest thing to do. For a quest target, maybe it was a better idea to just go over to the less popular spot with no quests and just grind out a level or two so you can move on. I can't. Grinding isn't something that anyone would really describe as compelling gameplay. It's not very dynamic. It is, by definition, repetitive. Yep. It's the kind of thing that intellectually everyone feels is kind of bad in a game because while it's not truly pointless, it's definitely low on point. But that aimlessness is maybe not all bad. Grinding is, in essence, the purest distillation of self-directed play. There's no diegetic authority telling the player what to do or how to do it. There's just a vague incentive and the player's own discretion about how to get there. 
Now, this is the same incentive set that led to the addition of all those other tasks and options to the game, and in a sense, players in 2019 have far, far more freedom in how they go about achieving their general goals. So at present, players have more structured options to engage with, but what we find in the comparison between Classic and Battle for Azeroth is that paradoxically, adding more content, more structured activities, can make it feel like there are fewer options. This happens because as you add more direction, more structure, the emotional value of self-direction goes down. And even if self-directed freeform okay. play boils down to only a okay. few viable options, the fact that there's nothing telling you to do it, well, that does a lot for the illusion of openness. And I should say that I'm not using illusion here as a pejorative. I love illusions. I crave a well-crafted illusion. And I agree. I totally agree. Blizzard, back in the day, they said, oh, well, the old talent trees gave you the illusion of choice. Good. At least that fools some people. The new talent trees don't give you any choice at all. Or at least at the beginning they didn't, right? Like, just getting rid of them gives no one a choice. Now you just have all your talents assigned to you already. Back then, yeah, you didn't have a choice, but it fooled some people. Now it doesn't fool anyone because you just have the talents assigned to you to begin with. Classic delivers them in spades. For a while, at least. At some point in the last 15 yeah. years, gradually, bit by bit, the game has discarded most of these illusions in a lot of ways because the players grew past them. Spend enough uh. time with an illusion and you start to see through it. You figure it out. And at a certain point, you just yeah. want it to be honest with you. And that honesty, laying out mechanics, revealing the nuts and bolts of how it all works, just telling players where the quests are and how to complete them, providing a dozen alternate ways to level, letting them fly over every hill. Yeah. It's not a bad approach, but it's mutually exclusive with mystery and the illusion of a wide open world. You can, in Battle for Azeroth, level up by running around in circles endlessly killing murlocs, but the whole time that you do it, there's the overhanging knowledge that there's so many better, more efficient, structured, organized, sanctioned, fun ways of doing it, so why are you bothering? It's not about fun. Let me tell you something. If I had two options, option one, Level in BFA takes 10 hours. Option two, kill the exact same mob for five hours. I would go with option two every fucking time. <clears throat> it's not about anything else but the efficiency. Why do people farm SM from 30 to 40? Because of the efficiency. The odds are many of them are not as good at questing as Joker is. Many of them are not as good at, you know, figuring out where all the mobs are and avoiding world PvP confrontations. Many of them are not. The reason why they're farming an SM is because it's the fastest way for them to level up. That's why. Joker didn't quest? Yeah, he did. Um, yeah, of course he quested. Um, the fact is that it is the fastest way. People will always trend towards doing the fastest thing. It doesn't matter if the fastest thing is something that's very complex and convoluted or something that's as simple as killing one mob. That's why in current WoW, nobody grinds the mobs anymore is because it's not the most efficient way to level. If Blizzard changed that and they made grinding mobs the most efficient way to level, nobody would do quests. Blizzard made it to where questing and going through the quest, uh, the whole like quest lines is the fast and bestest way to level. And that's why everybody does it is because it's the best, fast and bestest way to level. In Classic, well, everything sucks, so you're free. Do whatever you want. Is aimless grinding better experience than questing? Generally, no, but it's not that much worse either. There is a kind of freedom in the lack of structured options. Anything you choose to do is about as good as anything else. There's a simplicity to that, a clarity that the game has definitely moved away from. Yep. And again, that's not bad. Leveling in Battle for Azeroth uh. is a lot more dynamic and less punishing, but it's also a lot more dense, more noisy, and less meditative. I think that Classic WoW is much more dynamic than leveling in, B in BFA. 
Uh, Classic WoW is much more interesting in terms of leveling because you actually have to... Like, in Classic WoW, I, I genuinely think that the leveling experience in Classic WoW is infinitely better than anything that we've seen since, like, Wrath of the Lich King. It is infinitely better. Because there are times where you can lose. And because you can lose, that forces the player to get better. The player will never get better unless they lose. Because there's no reason to lose. Think about how many people would play their mage and only hit Frostbolt or Arcane Missiles or whatever, Fireball, and never learn another spell if they never had to. Classic WoW does a much better job at teaching you your class, allowing you to have different types of dynamic gameplay. Let's say you have like a little little pack of three Murlocs. The thinking that you re that you do, that figuring out how you want to handle that pack of three Murlocs is much more dynamic than most of the thinking that people have going all the way through BFA. Because you just run in there, pop your CDs, hit the buttons, and then he dies. That's it. It's much more dynamic and classic in terms of leveling. Like the leveling experience, like in-game, everything, like whatever, right? But the leveling experience in classic is vastly superior, in my opinion, in nearly every single way. It's a rush to get to level cap because yes. that's where all the players are. Yes. And the thing is that for most players, that's what they want. The aimless, self-directed play of classic is cute and interesting, but wears out quickly. There's only so many times you can grief Alliance at Maristead before you're just done with it. The first time yeah. you have to wait 30 minutes for a party member to get to the dungeon because they were on the other side of the world and it just takes that long to get anywhere, uh, it's a drinking game style moment. But by the third or fourth time you just really, really wish they'd turn the damn summoning stones back on. That's true. I need to take a piss, so guys, I'll be right back. Sorry, I I'll take a piss. No, I, I don't want to sell out for Twitch Prime right now. I don't, I don't want to right now. Well, uh, actually, you know what? Nah, I don't want to. I've changed my mind. By the way, Shaman are fucking OP when leveling. You're, it's actually broken, dude. Like, sh leveling as a shaman is amazing compared to a paladin. It doesn't even come okay. close. Okay. Shaman are the they're the best class by far. What's this true shit? I'm scrolling up, dude. What the fuck is this? What the fuck, dude? Um. <coughs> uh, okay. All right. So listen. He's talking about, sh I, I don't even know what the fuck, shaman? No, fuck shamans, dude. Okay, let, let me go back to the video. Yeah, obviously you want to turn on the summoning stones. Everybody wants to turn on the summoning stones for themselves. Like, duh, like, of course. But not having them turned on and knowing that they're not going to get, <coughs> not going to get turned on makes accomplishing something without them more meaningful, of course. However, for players who not only enjoy that illusion of open-ended freedom and the pace that comes with it, but prefer it, it makes sense that yeah. maybe they feel like the game has left them behind over the years. That's exactly how I feel. That is exactly how I feel. I, 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 I don't know how else it could be better described. Who's oh, Duver. <laughs> I've seen chats. Is that hose, man? Is that supposed to be hose, man? Okay, so obviously the video has a lot of... It ha has a lot to it. There's a lot to unpack, you know, etc., right? Um... Let's see, is there any, anything worth saying? Sorry, now shouting on smart people. I associate volume internet man with correctness of arguments. Okay, um, I'm, I'm sure you're very smart too. Smaller group of 10 friends. Everybody off for 20 minutes. I feel like I understand why people do. Thanks, Dan. 
Uh, I like good things. Such a troublesome idea. It was a discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop fe feeling like opinions. Start feeling like an obligation. Yep, that's about right. I think that's why people don't like a lot of the fucking the box stuff and everything like that. So kind of like what Kevin Jordan said. Uh, I agree with that a lot. Uh, F's and shit. Okay, here. Um, and before Asmongold. Well, I, I, oh, oh, look at that, dude. There you go. There you go.